Good morning, Europe. It's Monday, the 27th of December, and here are your headlines. World leaders pay tribute to the anti-apartheid leader, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, as South Africa begins a week of events to mark his death. In Belgium, thousands of arts and culture workers have been protesting over the government's restrictions to slow down the spread of the Omicron variant. And the bodies of at least 28 migrants have been found on Libya's coast after their boat capsized on the world's deadliest migration route. Across Cape Town, a homage to Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the South African anti-apartheid icon who has died aged 90. Buildings were lit up in purple after his famous bright clerical gown. Tutu won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 and battled pancreatic cancer for 20 years. Earlier, South Africa's president, Simul Ramaphosa, paid his respects to the national hero. He knew in his soul that good would triumph over evil, that justice would prevail over iniquity, and that reconciliation would prevail over revenge and recrimination. He knew that apartheid would one day end, and that democracy would come. Tutu coined the term Rainbow Nation to describe South Africa and in 1996 led a harrowing journey into the history of apartheid as the head of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Outside his long-term residence in Soweto, locals gathered to bid him farewell. As you know that this street is the only street where in the, two, uh, in the world the two Nobel Peace Prize winners have lived, um, you can then imagine us, um, the neighbours around, um, we are really touched by his passing. Uh, he'll be missed a lot, played a very important role uh, in the lives of blacks and just the uh, lives of everyone in South mm. Africa had a very huge impact. So he'll be dearly missed and may his soul rest in peace. Indeed. Desmond Tutu's impact changed not only South Africa, but stretched far into the world empowering pro-democracy activists and non-violent forms of resistance. His funeral has been set for the 1st of January. As Omicron cases surge past 100,000 a day, the French government is planning to tighten up. It wants to limit its Covid pass so unvaccinated people won't be able to get one simply on the basis that they've had a negative test. The pass is required for access to cafes, restaurants and public spaces. In the UK, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have all tightened up on leisure activities and going out to pubs and cafes. They've resumed social distancing rules and are putting limits on the sizes of gatherings. And England may also tighten up. Prime Minister Boris Johnson said he's not ruling anything out. Portugal will also limit the size of gatherings in the new year and require negative tests for people to enter restaurants and other public places. Omicron has already become the dominant strain, but it also has one of the world's highest rates of vaccination with around 87% of Portugal's 10 million population fully inoculated. In the state of New South Wales in Australia, there's been a record number of cases and a sharp jump in hospital numbers, even as thousands of people continue to isolate at home. State Minister Brad Hazard said he expected almost everyone to contract Omicron. The casualties of Europe's migrant crisis, 26 bodies washed up on Libya's western coast, the latest tragedy on the world's deadliest migrant route. According to a security official, the body's advanced state of decomposition indicates that the shipwreck happened several days ago. He also added that the toll could rise in the coming hours. Of course, the refrigerator of the Homs Hospital can deal with fresh corpses, but decomposing corpses are difficult to work with and store in the refrigerator. Now the bodies are in the refrigerator, and God willing, they will be shown to the coroner tomorrow. Some were luckier. Recently, a rescue ship disembarked in Sicily, bringing 214 people to safety. For them, the ordeal is over. Russia's Gazprom called accusations that the company is reducing supplies to Europe in order to influence prices. 
lies and falsehood. Moscow says this year's contracts are in some cases even bigger than last year's. But many countries have already received the full volumes they paid for. They say it was the lack of bids that led to the suspension of pumping through the Yamal Europe pipeline at the beginning of the week. Gazprom's official spokesman said there is a physical reversal of gas from Germany to Poland and apparently to Ukraine in the amount of 3 to 5 million cubic metres per day. At the same time, gas is being pumped out from underground storage facilities in Germany where 47% of the gas has already been taken, and winter is just starting. It's not the most rational decision. I don't even want to speak about the price of such reverse deliveries. These prices are significantly higher than the prices for contract volumes provided by Gazprom. All the problems in Western Europe are created by themselves. It is better to look at the mirror. After Gazprom stopped reserving Yamal Europe's capacity, gas prices in the EU reached a historic high. Weather forecasts say Europe is in for a very cold winter and a decision by Germany's federal network agency, which said it has no plans to certify the Nord Stream 2 pipeline until next July, are among the reasons for the sharp jump in gas prices. Thousands of Sudanese protesters took to the streets two months after a military coup. They demanded that soldiers go back to the barracks and called for a transition to full civilian rule. At least 48 have been killed in weeks of protest. General Al Buran seized power before reinstating civilian leader Hamdok in late November. However, many people have refused to accept this. British police arrested a man on Saturday after a security breach at Windsor Castle, where the Queen was celebrating Christmas. They said he was carrying an offensive weapon and that he entered the grounds at 8.30 in the morning. The authorities also added that security processes were triggered within moments of the man entering the grounds and that he did not enter any buildings. Members of the royal family have been informed. In the state of Kentucky, a team of volunteers has ensured families hit two weeks ago by a string of tornadoes have something to celebrate Christmas with. In the town of Mayfield, the volunteers have served over 30,000 meals since the disaster struck. At least 79 people lost their lives in the tornadoes overnight on December the 10th. 3.6 million people live in the city of Berlin, but alongside them there are thousands of foxes who also call the German capital home. Biologist Sophia Kimmig has equipped several of the animals with a GPS system and knows a lot about their roots and also about the history of today's Berlin foxes. She says the city foxes that live here, they don't just come from Brandenburg. They have been living here for many generations. Their ancestors moved here to the city. They only know this kind of life. And life as a city fox is dangerous, mainly because of the road traffic. On average, urban foxes only live to be one and a half years old. But why are they hardly ever seen in Berlin? According to Kimmich, the reason that you don't see the foxes is that they are really good at making themselves invisible. She says from the GPS data you can see how they stay on unused land or really small areas that are fenced in and where they can hide well. The foxes also find shelter in the capital's parks. Urban foxes have an easier time finding food compared to their rural relatives. They eat rats, mice, and will not say no to the occasional kebab or burger. 